In this video, I'm going to explore why GMOs themselves aren't bad for you, yet may still poison you. GMO, or genetically modified organism, is a term applied mostly to the produce from the mega farms of Canada and the USA, and some form of genetically modified organism is in most of the processed food we buy and eat today in North America. Many countries, especially in Europe, have placed bans on the cultivation and sale of GMO produce and products. Nations like France, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Greece, and Luxembourg all prohibit the sale and use of GMOs. There are large groups of people in most every nation on earth that are against the use of GMOs. So why are our governments allowing farmers and ranchers to grow and sell GMO food if so many people are against it? Consider the size of the agriculture industry. Most everything we eat is either grown or raised, and that which is raised is also fed food which we grow. Growing and selling food is a larger business than oil. Think about it. Many people drive cars, but everyone has to eat, and every day. The dollars at stake are ginormous. In North America, farmers want to produce as much produce as possible per acre, and profit is the driving factor behind everything. But with public health potentially at risk, why does the government continue to allow GMOs in commercial agriculture and actually promote their use if some say they are bad for us? It comes down to accredited testing. A GMO plant has to pass all kinds of rigorous testing to make it to market. So if GMO plants are passing all the safety tests, why is there so much resistance to GMOs? Shouldn't science always trump intuition? Let's take a look at these tests, as they're the main reason the government regulatory agencies pass and support GMO crop production. Genetic analysis is a GMO testing method that detects the presence of a transgene in a plant cell's genome. The specific GMO test used in this method is called the polymerase chain reaction PCR test. This test works and the results are often the basis for proof that the final GMO plant poses no risk to humans if eaten. And this is where the system breaks down. Yes, the GMO plants that pass this and other extensive tests are not harmful to humans. The repeated results of this kind of testing on specific GMO plants allows for the government approval of commercialization of genetically modified crops. There's one thing that keeps getting ignored though, and that's the actual reason for the vast majority of genetic modification. We've all heard that GMOs create larger vegetables, disease resistance, improved climate adaptability, and insect resistance. All things that sound great if genetic modification was the solution to these problems. And it can be. But the problem is, that's not the basis for the vast majority of GMO research. The real reason our food is being genetically modified right now is to increase sales of glyphosate. Yes, the majority of implemented GMO crops exist for one reason, increased resistance to glyphosate for better weed control. Now what the heck is glyphosate? Glyphosate is a herbicide. So what's a herbicide? A herbicide is a substance that is toxic to plants used to kill unwanted vegetation. It's applied to the leaves of plants to kill both broadleaf plants and grasses. Once glyphosate is absorbed into the leaves of a plant, glyphosate cannot be broken down. In one word, glyphosate is poison, pure poison, cancer causing poison that accumulates over time in living cells. You might know it by another name, Roundup. Whoa, wait, isn't that the stuff poisoning people? giving them cancer? And Monsanto and Bayer are now involved in major lawsuits on? Roundup certainly is scary stuff, but what's that got to do with GMOs? The vast majority of GMOs were created not for bigger crops, 
not for insect and harsh climate resistance, not for flavor improvement or better shelf life. Don't believe the hype. The reality is the vast majority of GMO crops were created so the crop would be Roundup resistant. That's it. Roundup resistant, weed control. The overwhelming majority of GMO research implemented into crop production is for one main purpose, and that purpose is to spray more Roundup on a field to kill more weeds. Roundup kills almost all plant life, but genetically modified Roundup resistant plants survive. The problem is Roundup resistant GMO plants absorb more Roundup, a lot more, than non-GMO crops. So you end up eating more glyphosate absorbed by those crops. Remember, glyphosate cannot be broken down. It ends up in you. And Roundup isn't something most GMO lab tests look for. They test plants grown in greenhouses with no Roundup sprayed on them. They're looking for genetic issues, not poison. So that's the big conspiracy. GMOs themselves aren't bad for you. But ingesting more glyphosate, which is Roundup, well... Look at the lawsuits around Roundup now and cancer. I believe our governments have been the victims of misinformation and data manipulation regarding the safety of GMO food. I believe companies that produce GMOs played a shell game with the health risks, showing that GMOs themselves are harmless, which for the most part is true, while hiding the real danger which is increased glyphosate absorption, which gets passed along to humans. Does using Roundup on weeds increase crop production? Yes. Is it worth the health risks? Most of Europe says no. What do they seem to know that we don't? There's one more issue with GMOs that's just starting to take light. Seed. When a research company spends millions to develop a plant that's Roundup resistant, they want to protect their investment. The real profit is in selling the seed and reselling the seed to the same client year after year. This is done legally by banning the practice of saving the seeds on your genetically modified plant. Now farmers, since the dawn of time, have saved a portion of their crop to replant the next year. GMO plants come with legal restrictions on replanting. The research companies that develop the genetically modified plants own a patent on the modified DNA of the plant and legally you must buy new seed from them every year and are legally banned from replanting seed via the contract you have to sign when you buy the seed. That seems to make sense. People need to get paid for their work. But this has gone so far out of control now that farmers who find GMO crops in their non-GMO fields from seed blown in by the wind from neighboring crops are now liable and have been successfully sued, wiping out their business. Even if they win the legal battle, the lawyer fees cripple and crush their business. At what point are we as a society going to allow mega corporations to crush their competition in court because their product blew into the competitor's field. Something has to change here. Personally, I think the solution lies more with small farmers and less with mega corporations. If we empower more people to grow food, it creates jobs and we end up with better food. Not just organic, but more local produce. New greenhouse technology is emerging, that is ROI, return on investment, sensitive and geared for small to medium sized farmers. There's a whole movement beginning on reinventing our food and it's driven not just by profit but by quality and taste. GMO isn't the only solution but mega corporations want you to believe it's the only way and the world will starve without GMOs. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's just about their profit with no concern for the small farmers and no concern for your health. If you liked this video and videos like this, you can actually manipulate YouTube's algorithm by subscribing and hitting the bell. By subscribing and hitting the bell, you tell YouTube these are the kind of videos you want more of. And YouTube will suggest more videos just like this for you to watch. So hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want to learn more about this kind of topic. Thanks for watching.
See you next time.